What's up guys? What's up YouTube land? Turbo man, 351 here. And as usual, it's a thousand degrees in the workshop. I mean, it is like you cannot breathe in here. It is that bad. But anyway, how much power can a T5 take? Right? Well, this is out of a 94 Ford Mustang GT. People ask, between the 93 and year up, obviously the Mustang completely changed. Not completely, but just the platform and overall the body shape. Still Fox body platform, okay? Some small changes on the T5, obviously the input shaft, length, uh, the bell housing. Now, when you get a 94 and up T5, just spend the money. It's only 130 bucks, and change the input shaft and the bearing retainer. Press on the bearing, shim it nice and good, and that's it. You won't have to change the bell housing, the cross member, the drive shaft. I mean, it's stupid to do all that. But anyway, how much power can a stock T5, even a rebuilt T5, handle? All right? My turbo car here, the red one, which you all know, 600 and some horsepower, all right, fine. But here's the deal. Hole shotting, dropping the clutch in first gear, doing crazy first gear burnouts, and a high horsepower turbo car is not going to work. Now, some guys have done that and have been fine. I have no idea. I think it's just a roll of the dice, but if you look on YouTube, you don't see many T5s breaking under these type of loads. <clears throat> Rodney, 50 Tussin, look at him. Now his horsepower range with his T5s is between 300 and 360. Now if you're in that ballpark of horsepower, that T5, you'll never break it. Okay? You might wear it out a little bit quicker, but you're not going to break anything. Okay? He has billet keys in it. Uh, he has that other piece in there that holds the bearing uh, retainer in. It's a billet piece. There's small things you can do to make it a little bit stronger, but not massively stronger. Okay? Roll racing on the highway. That's what I love to do. I'll be in fifth gear. Sometimes I'll go down. I'll grab third gear. Floor it. Boom. 600 horsepower comes in. Fine. Go down, grab fourth gear, boom, gone, fine, okay? I would be hesitant to say that when you're at an absolute standstill and coming out of first gear with all that power, you could break something. That is the, probably the weakest spot of the T5 is the one to two shift at a standstill trying to move all the car's weight and, and so on. But from two to three and three to four shift, Fine. I mean, I threw 600 horsepower at it. It's been fine. And the T5 I had, I had rebuilt. You know, the typical rebuild. You know, keys, uh, synchronizers, bearings. Uh, I had to replace second gear. But obviously, it was, you know, chewed up. But, you know, don't let them tell you, oh, the T5's like glass, blah, blah, blah. Huh? It is not. Okay. And 50 Tustin is a good example of that. I mean, look how he shifts. It's insane how that guy can drive a stick car. <laughs> and his T5s are not breaking. Nothing. So don't let them tell you that a T5 is not the way to go. But obviously, if you are doing some serious racing and some serious, you know, like autocrossing, yeah, I'd go to a different transmission. But on anything under that and just having fun and playing, and you're throwing that type of horsepower at it. I mean, I wouldn't go over 600, you know what I mean? Some guys have, but I'm just saying for me, I'd probably get a different one. But, you know, 300, 405 to 600, it is fine under those certain type of driving conditions, like I just said. No hole shotting, no doing crazy burnouts. Now, I know some people are going to be like, are you crazy, man? I can't do burnouts. you just broken the golden rule of hot rodding. Yeah, well... I'm more conservative a little bit, you know, I have a really nice car that the Lord has blessed me, and, you know, I get it, I did a lot of burnouts when I was younger, yay, hippie hooray, okay, but right now, you know, 
I just don't do them as much anymore because it really tears up the car, it tears up the tire, and it puts a lot of stress back there. So I just don't do them no more. But anyway, that's it in a nutshell, man. All right, so just to let you know, how much power can a T5 take? Well, my car is a good example of that. It's still driving, it's still going fine. No noises from the transmission, no grinding. The only problem that I have is when I shift in the fifth gear all the time, I get a little grind. Now that's probably something Obviously, with the synchronizers, that I'll have to look at, but that's nothing big. It's a used transmission. Anyway, I bought it used, and the guy I had rebuilt it probably didn't do something right, but anyway, it's still fine. And we're going to put this in the blue car here real soon. We got the input shaft on from Astro Performance. We're ready to go. I mean, I got absolutely zero shaft blade. We did a pretty good job on shimmy nap. Took three shims, and... Um, we're good to go. So don't believe the snake oil out there about T5s, okay? It's a decent transmission. I, if you have anything out in your local junkyard, I'd go get it, okay? Definitely get it. Get the T5, okay? I mean, because they're getting scarce right now. And so just a little word of advice. All right, guys. Peace.